Making roast beef requires little time and effort to prepare, allowing you more time to enjoy friends and family. Join us as Joyce Parslow with Canadian Beef demonstrates just how easy it is to create garlic-studded roast beef. Yummy! This is Daily Web TV. Garlic and beef make a perfect marriage. Don't you agree, Joyce? Mm -hmm. Why do you love cooking roast beef so much? Roast beef is so easy. It's a snap to prepare. You just season the meat, put it in the oven, and then I'm free to do whatever I want while it cooks all by itself. Now, how do I choose the perfect roast when I go shopping? Well, first of all, when you're in the grocery store, you're looking for a label that says either premium oven roast or oven roast. In premium oven roasts, there can be prime rib premium oven roast, top sirloin premium oven roast. Those roasts are ever tender. And then in oven roast, there's the round roast, like eye of round, and there's also sirloin tip. But I always buy Canadian beef that's been grated, and it's good to have it grated Canada Prime, Canada AA, or Canada AAA for my assurance that I'm going to get juicy, tender roast beef. Now, what's the secret to making the perfect roast beef? Okay, I'm going to share it with you. Okay. We have a new two-stage method that makes the best, most evenly cooked roast beef that's beautifully in brown and tender and juicy. So first, we're going to start off with cooking the roast at 450 degrees for 10 minutes. Then we turn the oven back to 275 and just let it cook low and slow. Now, how have you figured out that this is the best way to do it? We tested it at a lab with a meat scientist with lots of cuts of beef. And then we let the consumers take it home and the consumer tested it for us at their own homes. Well, let's get started with step one. Okay, great. Let's get the oven going first of all. Okay. Can we turn that up to 450 so degrees? 450 we want. Yeah, because we want to get that temperature going while we're seasoning our beef. So the first thing we do with the garlic studded roast beef is we're going to be cutting slits all over the roast with a sharp knife. And then we're going to fill those slits with slivers of garlic. This is called barding, which infuses the meat with garlic. As the meat cooks, the garlic cooks too, and that flavor of the garlic is going to permeate the meat all the way through. And then next after that, we're going to be seasoning it with some coarse salt, either coarsely ground sea salt or kosher salt. Just rub it all over. And could you put some pepper on there for me, I just do that. with the pepper grinder. Now, is it only necessary to do this on the, on the top where the fat is? I like to do it on the meat as well. And we place our roast in a shallow roasting pan with a rack, and the rack helps with even heat circulation all around the roast, so it cooks evenly. And I've got a prime rib here, so you can get away without a rack because the bones actually work right. if you put it bone side down. So we season that all over. I patted it dry before we got started so it would brown up nicely. And um, we don't put any water in the pan and we certainly don't put a cover on. We want to use dry heat when we're oven roasting. We don't want to be steaming our roast. Have you brought this roast to room temperature before you've cooked it? No, I just take it straight out of the fridge, do the seasoning and then it's ready to go. But here's a trick that I use for cooking roast beef to make sure I get it done the way I like it. You always need to be using a meat thermometer. Uh. I've got a couple of choices here. There's this kind, which is more of a traditional meat thermometer, and you leave it right in the roast while it cooks. Or there's this new version on the market, which I just love. This is a, a probe thermometer. You stick the probe right into the center of the meat, and then we just pop it in the oven. This gets to stay outside the oven, so you can monitor the temperature as the meat cooks. Wow. And you can also program it to have the temperature that you want it to finish cooking at. We take it to 140 degrees for medium rare. If we wanted to go to well or medium well done, we would set it to 160. So when the meat gets up to temperature, the beeper goes off and I know to come back and get my roast beef out of the oven. So it's Pretty. foolproof. And you don't have to open your oven door. I like that. All the time letting the heat out while the roast cooks. Well, the oven's ready, Joyce. That's great. Let's put it in for that 10 minute oven sear. I'll hold your thermometer. Thank here. you very much. So we'll set the timer, and this thermometer also comes with a timer on it. We'll set the timer for 10 minutes. Just up here. There we go. 
and we'll come back when the timer goes off and we'll turn the heat down. This is too easy. It's pretty easy. So after 450 degrees for 10 minutes, we're going to turn that temperature down to 275 and we're going to cook it low and slow because that's what you need for the most tender, juicy roast beef. Okay, the roast is ready to come out of the oven now, Sheila. Let's see what it looks like. Wow, look at that. Oh. It's amazing. Look at all the garlic bits sticking out of there. It smells as beautiful as it looks. Yeah. Now I'm going to just take this over to the cutting board and let it rest there. I'm going to tent it with some foil to keep it warm, but we don't want it to steam, so I'm going to tent it loosely. Like that. And resting is very important with roast. It makes it firm up a bit so it's easier to carve. It lets it finish off the cooking and it also lets the juices resettle so that when you slice into the meat, you don't get the juices all running out and end up with a dry roast. And while it's resting, we can go on and make the gravy. So to make the gravy, first thing we do is bring the pan to a sizzle, the pan that we cook the roast in. Deglaze the pan with a little bit of red wine, bring that up to a boil. And then we're gonna add about two cups of sodium reduced broth, beef broth, and let that cook down. And that's how you make an au jus style sauce that doesn't have any thickening. Now if you want a more traditional gravy, you strain the sauce off now if you want it nice and smooth. Take any extra fat off the surface and then to thicken it you would just whisk in a mixture of cornstarch and water and let that cook up for three to four minutes until it's nice and smooth and thickened. Okay, so now our roast has rested. I've cut off the twine and I'm going to carve the prime rib. The easiest way to carve a prime rib is to take it off the bone first. Oh. So I just cut along the inside of the meat. And you notice I'm cutting on a cutting board that's set in a rimmed pan, and that's to catch any juices that might come off. So it makes for neater carving. Great idea. Yeah. So we take the meat off of the bone, set the bone aside. Some people like to munch on that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to use a nice sharp blade for cutting the roast. And you want to cut along the muscle fibers, cut across them. And you want to use a nice sharp knife that's got a smooth blade. You don't want a serrated blade or you'll be sawing the meat. Look at that, that's oh, beautiful. That is stunning. Would you like a piece? I think so. <laughs> and actually um, shortening the muscle fibers by doing it this way, cutting with the twine, makes the meat more tender. And uh, especially with a regular oven roast, premium roasts tend to be always tender, but with a moderately tender roast like an eye of round, you need to cut it into slivers. Mm. You can feel good about serving roast beef to your family because Canadian beef is packed full of 14 essential nutrients like vitamin B12. And vitamin B12 is essential for normal growth and development. Joyce is so sweet and succulent and easy. For more great beef recipes and beef know-how, you can go to beefinfo.org. Keeping you informed, I'm Sheila Clark and you've been watching Daily Web TV.